don't do that. Don't do that. Hang up your clothes. Eat all your food. I can't go back there. Butterfield isn't a school. It's, it's a prison. Uh -huh. I won't go back there. It, it's suffocating. I can't breathe in that awful place. Laura, if you want to go to a different school. Oh, you know what I want. Young lady, do you realize that you're only 16 years old? I'll be 17 next month. All right, 17. But that's still too young to travel to Europe alone. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. I'll let you go to Europe the minute you graduate from Butterfield. In fact, I'll not only let you go, I will give you the biggest bon voyage party Stockton has ever seen. Jared Barkley, you know I don't graduate for two years. And that seems like an eternity to you, I know. But believe me, it isn't. Now, Laura, I'm afraid you're just going to have to excuse me. Honestly, Jared, you're just as old-fashioned as father was. It's no wonder he chose you to be my guardian. I am supposed to be at the train station, young lady, to meet the 209 from Sacramento, and I'm late already, so I'm afraid we're going to have to continue this some other time. Well, there's nothing to continue, Jared. I've made up my mind I'm going to Europe, and you can't stop me. And what is it you plan to use for money? <laughs> You're not serious. Your mother's jewelry? My jewelry. You're not going to sell that. Oh, yes, I am. Mother left it to me. It's not part of Father's estate, so you have nothing to say about it. Now, wait a minute, Laura. Laura, you come back here. Laura. Laura. Listen, you know, just calm down and come back to the office. Let me go! Now, now, look, I'll tell you what. You come to dinner tonight, I'll arrange time for a little talk. There, I'm right? not coming to dinner tonight. Tonight I'm going to be on a train to New York to catch a ship for Europe. Yeah. Now, let me go! Sorry, Highness. I mean, I owe Welcome, Your Highness. This is indeed a great honor for my... our humble establishment. I miss it up. Jared! Jared, we missed you at the station. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, Reverend. Uh, a little matter came up. Well, no matter. Here you are. Uh, may I present Your Highness, Jared Barkley. Mr. Barkley? Your Highness? My aide, Captain Crawford. How do you do, sir, Captain? Now, the Barclays are hosting a fundraising party at their home on Saturday evening. That's very kind of you, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, we certainly feel that that's the least we could do. To my people, it is everything, Mr. Barclay. After three years of drought, millions of them are starving. His Highness would be most pleased if you could join us for tea, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, uh, I would like that very much, Your Highness, but uh, unfortunately, I have an urgent errand to run. So, uh, uh, until this evening? This evening? I've taken the liberty of arranging for you to have dinner at the Barclays. That is, if you have no other plans. Oh, no, we don't. We'll be honored. Until then, Mr. Barclay. Good. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me. Right this way, Your Highness. <laughs>
luck? Well, it looks like you got trouble, Jane. She's not on that train. I know that. I went through every car. Well, she didn't get on the stage either. What about her friends? Did you check them? Yep. Every one of them said if she's made up her mind to go to Europe, she's going to make it to Europe. Oh, you wait till I get my hands on that little... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I wonder if she could have ridden out to Fry's Junction to catch that train there. I don't know, but I'll check it out for you. And there's a legend that India itself, with all its beauty and mystery, was enticed from the sea by a music of a sitar. It's beautiful. It's yours, Mrs. Barclay. Oh, no, Your Highness, I couldn't. Please, I want you to have it as a token of my appreciation for your hospitality. Well, uh, all right. On the condition that you will play it for us later. Oh, it'll be my pleasure. Mrs. Barclay? Yes, sir. Dinner is served. Shall we go in? Oh, that's all right, Silas. I'll get it. Oh, good evening, Garrett. Oh, I do hope I haven't kept everyone waiting. Well, Laura, how nice you could come, after all. Sounds as though you weren't expecting me. Oh, Jared did say you might not be able to make it. Now, what in the world gave him that idea? Your Highness, may I present Jared's ward, Laura Hayden. Oh, we've met. Oh, Miss Hayden? Well, I'll have Silas set another place. May I, Miss Hayden? Thank you. My country. My apologies for not having something for you, Miss Hayden. Had I known you were going to be here, or, wait. Perhaps you'll allow me to give you this as a memento, which has been for me at least a very enjoyable evening. Oh no, I, I couldn't. It's only an imitation. Yes, I'm afraid His Highness has sold virtually all of his jewelry in order to raise money to help alleviate the suffering of his people. Please accept it. Thank you. Well, Your Highness, it is getting late, and we have a busy schedule tomorrow. Yes, I'm afraid we must go. Laura, I'll get the buggy for you. Jared, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure Prince Ranjit and Captain uh, Crawford would be glad to drop me by my place on their way into town. Uh, well, of course. <laughs> Good evening, Missy. Wong, this is Prince Ranjit. Oh, yes, I heard much about young Prince. I hope you find your stay bountiful. It will be. May I prepare some refreshment, yes? Thank you, but it's getting kind of late. Oh, tea will only take a few minutes. And you can ask your aide to join us if you like. It's a nice evening. I don't think he'll be uncomfortable waiting outside. You have a beautiful home, Miss Hayden. Do you live here all alone? When I'm not in school. And if you call having a houseman and a cook, a couple of maids, a ranch foreman, and 20 ranch hands around all the time <laughs> living alone. Uh. My mother and father were killed in a railroad accident three years ago. My sympathy, Miss Hayden. Oh, please. Not Miss Hayden. Call me Laura. Only on one condition, that you call me Ranjit. Oh, all right. 
Ranjit, I want to do something for your people. I'm going to give you ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars? Hmm. Laura, that's a great deal of money. Well, I have a great deal of money. But I couldn't let you. Oh, please, Ranjit. You made me accept your ring. Now I'm going to make you take the money. Good night, Mrs. Owens. Good night, Nina. Oh, Your Highness, I do hope you had a pleasant evening at the Barclays. Very pleasant. Uh, aren't you coming, Captain? Not yet, Your Highness. I thought first perhaps I'd have a little nightcap, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Good night. Good night, Your Highness. Good night. Good night. Harry. I beg your pardon? Harry Davis. Davis? Don't you remember me? Nita Yates, I knew you in San Francisco. You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Oh, but I could have sworn you. Oh, well, maybe I am. Sorry. That's quite all right. Quite all right. <laughs> $10,000? Now, Jared, it's not for me. It's for Ranjit. Ranjit? Well, he asked me to call him that. It's a donation to buy food for his people. Well, you're going to make a donation, aren't you? Yes, but not $10,000. Well, Jared, that's not much. Not when you have as much money as I have. Oh, please say yes. I'll tell you what, young lady. I'll make a little deal with you. Mm. I'll authorize, say, $5,000. And Five that's th on the condition that you promise to go back to school next fall and that I don't hear any more of this nonsense about running off to Europe. Father was very right to pick you, Jared. I give you my word. Uh. All right, I'll authorize a draft for $5,000 and you can donate it at the reception on Saturday. Oh, Jared. <clears throat> I'll go tell Raji right away. You're seeing him today? We're going riding! Oh, thanks, Nita. Well, that sure looks good. By the way, how have you been? Oh, fine. How have you been? Oh, I can't complain. I hear there's going to be quite a shindig up at your place Saturday night for this Prince Ranjit Singh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, you want to come? Oh, what are you talking about? I'd be a fish out of water rubbing elbows with those people you're going to have. Oh, you know better than that. Something bothering you, Nina? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's nothing, but... But what? Look, you've been real good to me since I hit town. Your whole family has. I told you I'd never forget it, and I haven't. So? There's something you ought to know before that party. Last night, I saw... Nita! Nita! I'm having the cook prepare a special supper for the prince. You go to the store and buy ten cents worth of curry right away. The cook is waiting. Yes, Mrs. Owens. Do hurry. Heath, can you meet me at my place after I get off work tonight? Sure, if it's important. It is. This is my favorite spot on the whole ranch. You must have many beautiful places to choose from. You must be owning most of the state. Oh, no. Only 5,000 acres. Rajit, I have good news for you. Huh? I talked to Jared this morning about the money, and, well, he agreed to $5,000. But he's going to give me a bank draft, and I can give it to you Saturday. Something wrong? No, except, well, I don't know how I can show my appreciation. But when I return home to Amritsar, I shall tell everyone of your kindness. Amritsar, that's the city of the Golden Temple on the banks of the Indus. I read all about it in my geography book last night. 
Must be a beautiful place. Yes, it is. I wish I could show it to you someday. Perhaps someday you will. fool you after all, did I? No. <laughs> well, I didn't think I did. You know, I, uh, I debated bluffing it through, but I decided it might be wiser to come and talk to you. What do you want? The question is, what do you want? Nothing from you. Oh, now, come on. That isn't the Nita I knew in San Francisco. Come on, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Sir? People change. Lita, I'm real glad to hear you say that. Real glad. Because I've changed, too. Then why are you pretending to be someone named Captain Crawford? Listen, I'm going straight, Nita. I have been ever since I saw you last. I shipped out to India. It took me ten years to become the captain of my own ship. I've changed, Nita, more than my name. I'm, I'm not Harry Davis anymore in any way. But Harry Davis is still wanted for murder in San Francisco. That hasn't changed. Nita. Nita, please. Please don't mess me up with... with the Prince. I, my job as his aide is very important to me. I'll bet it is. He's here to raise money, and the more money he raises, the more you can steal from him. And if you steal from him, it's the same thing as stealing from people who gave me a hand when I needed help. People who didn't care who I was or what I'd been. Now, get out! You're gonna tell your friends about me? Yes. Ten years of my life, Nita. Washed out. Just... Just like that. I've heard your soft soap before, too, Harry. Now get out! society, but she sure didn't deserve this. Now, what are you doing here anyway? Well, I had lunch at the hotel. She said there was something she wanted me to know about before the reception Mother's given Saturday night. She say what it was? No. How about the man you saw running away from here? Any idea who he is? Well? No. Why, Johanna? 
Harris. This is an unexpected pleasure. Come in. Thank you. Please sit down. Mr. Barclay, my visit concerns Laura. Yes. Mr. Barclay, I would like to ask your permission, as Laura's guardian, to ask her to become my wife. Your wife? Yes. Well, you realize, Your Highness, that Laura is still a child. She's 16, same age as I. You're both still children. Mr. Barclay, perhaps in this country, you can afford to prolong the childhood of your young. But that's a luxury in which we cannot indulge in India. Your Highness. So please understand when I say I consider myself as much a man at 16 as you are at your age. I assumed my father's throne when I was 14. Whatever childhood I had left ended there, I assure you. I am responsible for the welfare of 10 million people in Punjab, Mr. Barclay. And I feel that entitles me to take my place as a man. Very well, Your Highness. I'm willing to concede that you were mature beyond your years. But I'm afraid Laura isn't. She's still very young and extremely impressionable. You think she's in love with me because I am a prince? Yes, I do. So I'm afraid I can't give Laura my permission to marry you. If for no other reason, her father's will stipulates that she forfeit his estate if she should marry before she's 21. What if she's willing to do that? I would hope you wouldn't let her. I can't promise that, Mr. Barclay. Good day. Oh, there you are. We're having lunch with Reverend Hamilton. He's invited some of his minister friends from around Stockton to meet you. I, uh, saw you going into Jared Barclay's office. What were you doing there? Oh, I wanted to talk to him. So? What about? I asked you, what about? Oh, about Laura Hayden. Laura Hayden? What about her? Oh, I asked Mr. Barclay for permission to marry her. You what? You must be out of your mind. She's in love with me. Are you in love with her? No. <laughs> Just interested in her money, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. You're lying. You are in love with her. No. Stop it. You're not fooling me. Sure, I've seen the way you've looked at her. You're gone on her. What if I am? What's the matter with you? You started believing that you're really Prince Ranjit Singh? No. Well, what were you thinking of? What did you think you would do after you married that girl? Take her back to that hole I pulled you out of in Amristar? Oh, maybe you thought that you would settle down here in Stockton, huh? And go on making people believe that you were a prince. I don't know. You don't know. Well, now you know. So you just forget it. After the Barclays party, we take the money and we move on. Do you understand? Well? No. What? I can't do it. Listen, what in the world has gotten into you? These people are practically begging for us to take their money and all of a sudden... It's not all of a sudden. I've been wanting to quit for a long time. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, boy. You should have told me. I was going to tell you after the last job. And then you came out with this Prince Ranjit idea. Well, I thought I could do it. You can. Yes, boy, you can. Oh, look. I know how you feel. I was ready to call it quits myself. Until I hit on this idea, then I realized we could pull out winners. 
You know, this isn't like the nickel and dime stuff we've been working before, boy. This is big. This is big. We can pull thirty to 40,000 out of this town. <laughs> and come to think of it, the Hayseeds will think we're doing them a favor. Sure, we're letting them think they're doing something for a suffering humanity. <laughs> it eases their conscience. They feel good, we feel good, everybody's happy, huh? <laughs> Come on, boy. Just a few more days and... And you'll have another idea. And we'll go on the way we have for eight years. I want to quit now. You'll do as you're told. Is that clear? Yes. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Finish addressing these invitations later if you'd like. No, we'd better finish them now. Are you sure Jared's going to be home for lunch? Well, that's what he said when he left here this morning. Why? Is there something special you wanted to see him about? No, I was just wondering. Isn't it warm today? I hadn't noticed. Perhaps you'd like a nice glass of iced tea, hmm? Thank you. Laura? In here. Ah, there you are. You stopped by your house. Wong said you'd be here. Did Ranji talk to you? He did. And you said no, didn't you? How did you guess? Oh, I knew you would. I told Ranji, I told Ranji, it's no use even asking you. Now you listen to me. You are not in love with him. You haven't got the slightest idea what love is all about. Oh, if you're going to give me that you're just a child speech, you can save your breath. You know, I don't have to have your permission to marry Ranjit. That's right. But may I remind you, your father's will provides that if you marry before you're 21, you forfeit his estate. He had no right to put that in his will. He did it for your protection. I must say I give him credit. He obviously knew you a lot better than I thought he did. Jared, please. I do love Ranji. I really do. I know I'm young. Laura. Laura, I doubt very much whether youth makes much difference in your case. What do you mean? I mean, I wonder if you'll ever really know anything about love. I wonder if anyone as selfish as you are ever could, no matter how old she gets. Selfish? I had to beg you to let me give Ranjit $5,000, and you call me selfish. That's right. Laura, you want to give him that money to impress him. The fact that it might feed a lot of hungry people doesn't mean a thing to you. I hate you. <laughs> Laura! Laura! Let her go, Jared. Let her go. She'll cry it out. But I can't tell what she might do. Well, there's nothing you can do to prevent it, unless, of course, you'd like to lock her in her room until she's 21. Well, I suppose you're right. I tell you, I don't know what's going to happen to that girl. Same thing that happens with all children. They grow up. Yes, but in the meantime... In the meantime, you do the best you can. Not necessarily. I could ask Judge Hartman to appoint somebody else. No, no, Jared, that you cannot do. I didn't ask for the but job. But you didn't refuse it. Now, Jared, you're Laura's father, or the closest thing there is to one. And being a parent is one responsibility you can't walk away from. Come on, let's have some lunch. You'll feel better. Laura, I can't let you give up your father's estate. But I want to give it up. Oh, Rajit, we could go to San Francisco. I could sell my jewelry there. Jewelry? Mm-hmm. Well, it's worth a lot of money. Almost $20,000. I could go home and... No. But why? Laura, it's such a big step for you. I want you to be sure. I am sure. Think about it. I can leave Stockton before Barclay's party. We can decide after Saturday night. All right. Okay. You gotta go. 
Miss Hayden. Well, how nice to see you again. Thank you. Laura was just leaving. Oh, must you go? Yes. It was nice seeing you again, Captain Crawford. Thank you. Bye-bye. Laura just stopped by to... I know why she stopped by. So, Miss Hayden has $20,000 worth of jewelry at home, huh? She's giving us $5,000 Saturday night. Isn't that enough? Well, what's the matter with you? I know what you're thinking. You might as well forget it. All right, boy. It's forgotten. You busy? No, especially. Go on in. If you got a minute, I'd like to talk to you. Sure. What about? Well, about last night. You know, I told the sheriff I didn't have any idea who the man I saw running away from Nita's place was. Well, that was the truth, wasn't it? Well, it was and it wasn't. When I saw that man running away, I... Well, for a minute, I thought it was... the prince's aide. Crawford? What possible connection could there be between Crawford and Nita? I don't know. That's why I didn't say anything to the sheriff. Or to you. Because if it turned out that I was wrong, well, it could be pretty embarrassing for everybody. You're right, it would be. But when we get right down to it, we don't really know anything about Mr. Crawford, except for what Reverend Hamilton's told us. How much does he know? Not that much, really. He and Crawford exchanged a couple of letters when he found out from a medical missionary in India that Crawford and the Prince were coming to this country on a fundraising tour, that's all. That sounds legitimate enough, I guess. But I still can't get it out of my head that it was Crawford. I don't see that you have much choice, Heath. You'll have to go to the sheriff. If there's anything wrong with Mr. Crawford, we'd better find it out right now before this town hands a lot of money over to the Prince. Captain Crawford, I'm Sheriff Madden. Won't you come in, Sheriff? Okay. His Highness is resting at the moment, but I'll be glad to tell him you're here. No, Captain, it's you I came to see. Oh. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. What, um, what is it I can do for you, Sheriff? Well, now, this may be a little bit awkward, but, uh, I'd like to ask you about last night. What about last night? A woman named uh, Nita Yates worked here as a waitress in the hotel. Was found murdered. Oh, yes. Yes, I heard. What about it? Well, someone saw a man running away from Nita's house shortly after the murder, and uh, he thinks it was you. What? What is this, Sheriff? Some kind of a joke? Very well be, but I'd still have to ask you some questions. You understand that? Of course. Of course, Sheriff. What is it you want to know? How long have you been the Prince's aide? About ten years now. Before that, you were captain of a steamer. That's right. Star of India. Yeah, I know the ship well. Used to put into San Francisco. Not while I was captain, Sheriff. We only sailed from Southampton to Bombay. Now, may I ask what it is you're getting at? Nita Yates was from San Francisco, and at one point or another, she probably worked every saloon on the waterfront. I see. And you're wondering if I might have known her there? Uh-huh. Well, the answer, Sheriff, is no. I did not know her in San Francisco because I was never in that city until the Prince and I arrived there from Calcutta to start this tour. Well, I didn't think there was an American seaman alive who hadn't put into San Francisco at one point or another. Sheriff, are you calling me a liar? 
No, Captain, I'm merely suggesting that... I said I would cooperate, but I'm not going to submit to a cross-examination in which my honesty is obviously in question. You know, if the Prince knew about this... Oh, he could make trouble for me. Is that what you were going to say? He could, Sheriff. He could indeed. A great deal of trouble. Now, I'm... I'm willing to drop this right here. Because the whole thing is just... is just too preposterous to discuss any further. All right, Captain. Sorry I bothered you. Just one thing I'm curious about. What's that? Why haven't you asked about the man who thinks he saw you last night? Why should I? Oh, no reason. Unless you just don't care, or you already know. I heard you talking to someone. Well, it looks as if you're going to get your wish after all. My wish? You're going to have to leave the lambs in this town unshorn. What? That was the sheriff I was talking to. What did he want? I, uh... I suppose you've heard that a woman was murdered in town here last night. What about her? I knew her. In San Francisco, ten years ago. She saw me in the lobby night before last. She recognized me. And you killed her? Well, she didn't leave me any choice. Heath Barkley saw me running from the house. That's what the sheriff wanted to talk to me about. You killed a woman just... Don't you turn your back on me. Not after all I've done for you. Have you forgotten who you were and what you were when I picked you up? Why, you'd never eaten anything but slop. You'd never even slept in a bed. Where do you think you'd be now if I hadn't taken you in? Dead. That's right. And don't you forget it. Now, that... Jewelry that Laura Hayden was talking about. We're going to need it for traveling money. No. Shut up. I can't do it. Shut up and listen to me. I want Laura Hayden's jewelry. And you're going to help me get it. Because if you don't, and I'm arrested for Nita Yates' murder, I'm going to make sure you're sitting in that cell right next to me, waiting for the rope right along with me. Do I make myself clear? Maybe speak to you, Laura. Well, of course. Come in. I I told Captain Crawford why you came to the hotel this afternoon. Oh. Yes, yes, Miss Hayden. It's a great sacrifice you'll be making, giving up all this. But obviously, that's that's what you want. So I'm willing to help you and the Prince. Well, help us how? I know a ship in San Francisco that's sailing for Calcutta tomorrow. Tomorrow? If you leave now, you and the Prince can be on it before Mr. Barclay can make a move to stop you. But what about the party at the Barclay Saturday night? Uh, Laura, if we're going to get married, we have to leave now. And give up the money you need to buy food for... Miss Hayden, the Prince has just received an urgent message from Armiser, which demands that he leave for home immediately. No, I don't believe you. Laura, you wouldn't Laura, I'll without... explain it all later. Well, explain it now. Uh, Miss Hayden, there just isn't time. Now, where is the jewelry you told Ranjit about? The jewel. No! Give me that jewelry, Miss Hayden. Ranjit! Laura, give it to him. Give me that jewelry. Oh. Laura. <laughs> Laura, are you all right? Uh, stay away from me. Here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> 
What are you doing? Just making sure that she doesn't run the sheriff right away. I am taking her with us. Come on. I think our best chance to pick up their trail from here is to split up. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll meet at gun sight. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop here a few minutes and rest the horses. but an, an animal. Maybe you're right, Laura. That's what I was when Crawford found me in streets of Amrasa. Just an animal, fighting all the other animals for enough garbage to keep from starving. Crawford wanted a boy to use in a confidence game he was working. And I was lucky he picked me. He fed me, bought me decent clothes, even sent me to school, run by some British missionaries. In return, I helped him steal. But I wasn't hungry anymore. I was nearly 10 years old, and first time in my life I wasn't hungry. I can't forget that, Laura. I want to, but I can't. You could if you really wanted to. You could if... If you were half the person you pretended to be, the person that I fell in love with. You fell in love with Prince Ranjit Singh. No. I know that's what you believe. You and, and Jared, and everybody else. But it wasn't true. It just wasn't true.
and let's go. You heard me. I can't leave a man out there to die. You take the jewelry and go on. Laura and I are going to stay here. So this is the thanks I get, huh? I have to stop thanking you sometime. I'm not going. All right. All right, I don't care what you do. Go back to Amristar. Starve with the rest of your people. That girl's going with me. I need her for a hostage. She's staying. Look, boy, I don't want to hurt you, but I will. You're going to have to. No, no, Rajit. I'm going with him. Goodbye, you little fool. Nobody. Nobody, Mr. Barclay. What's your name? Jahan. Just Jahan. Oh, you're wrong, Jahan. It's Prince Ranjit Singh who was nobody. discussed it, and he agreed it was the best thing to do. Well, I'm not going to let him. I'm going to get him a lawyer who will really defend him. Ah, uh, well, just remember, young lady, lawyers cost money. But I'm forgetting, aren't I, that you always have your mother's jewelry. That's right, <laughs> and I can use it. Oh, Jared, how can you do this? How can you send Jahan to prison without a fight after he saved your life? Or does it uh, say somewhere in there that he's going to prison? But he will if he pleads guilty. Maybe. And maybe he'll be released on probation if someone will assume responsibility for him. And somebody has. Jan! Why aren't you in jail? Because the district attorney and the judge and I had a little conference and agreed that he should be released. Into my custody. He's uh, going to be working for us for a while. Quite a while, I'd say. <laughs> Really? And I imagine Nick and Heath can make a pretty good ranch hand out of him by the time you get back from school next summer. School? School. Well, Jarrett, I've been meaning to have another little talk with you about that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Jahan? 
It's cool, Laura. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Hang up your clothes. Eat all your food. I can't go back there. Butterfield isn't a school. It's, it's a prison. Uh -huh. I won't go back there. It's, it's suffocating. I can't breathe in that awful place. Laura, if you want to go to a different school. Oh, you know what I want. Young lady, do you realize that you're only 16 years old? I'll be 17 next month. All right, 17. But that's still too young to travel to Europe alone. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. I'll let you go to Europe the minute you graduate from Butterfield. In fact, I'll not only let you go, I will give you the biggest bon voyage party Stockton has ever seen. Jared Barkley, you know I don't graduate for two years. And that seems like an eternity to you, I know, but believe me, it isn't. Now, Laura, I'm afraid you're just going to have to excuse me. Honestly, Jared, you're just as old-fashioned as father was. It's no wonder he chose you to be my guardian. I am supposed to be at the train station, young lady, to meet the 209 from Sacramento, and I'm late already, so I'm afraid we're going to have to continue this some other time. Well, there's nothing to continue, Jared. I've made up my mind I'm going to Europe, and you can't stop me. And what is it you plan to use for money? <laughs> You're not serious. Your mother's jewelry? My jewelry. You're not going to sell that. Oh, yes, I am. Mother left it to me. It's not part of Father's estate, so you have nothing to say about it. Now, wait a minute, Laura. Laura, you come back here. Laura. Laura. Listen, you just calm down and come back to the office. Let me go. Now, now, look, I'll tell you what. You come to dinner tonight, I'll arrange time for a little talk. There, I'm all right? not coming to dinner tonight. Tonight I'm going to be on a train to New York to catch a ship for Europe. Yes. Now, let me go! I mean, I owe Welcome, it. Welcome, Your Highness. This is indeed a great honor for my... our humble establishment. I miss the... Jared! Jared, we missed you at the station. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, Reverend. Uh, a little matter came up. Well, no matter. Here you are. Uh, may I present Your Highness, Jared Barkley. Mr. Barkley? Your Highness? My aide, Captain Crawford. How do you do, sir? Captain? Now, the Barclays are hosting a fundraising party at their home on Saturday evening. That's very kind of you, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, we certainly feel that that's the least we could do. To my people, it is everything, Mr. Barclay. After three years of drought, millions of them are starving. His Highness would be most pleased if you could join us for tea, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, uh, I would like that very much, Your Highness, but uh, unfortunately, I have an urgent errand to run, so uh, uh, until this evening? This evening? I've taken the liberty of arranging for you to have dinner at the Barclays. That is, if you have no other plans. Oh, no, we don't. We'll be honored. Until then, Mr. Barclay. Good. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me. Right this way, Your Highness.
I can't go back there. Butterfield isn't a school. It's, it's a prison. Uh -huh. I won't go back there. It's, it's suffocating. I can't breathe in that awful place. Laura, if you want to go to a different school. Oh, you know what I want. Young lady, do you realize that you're only 16 years old? I'll be 17 next month. All right, 17. But that's still too young to travel to Europe alone. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. I'll let you go to Europe the minute you graduate from Butterfield. In fact, I'll not only let you go, I will give you the biggest bon voyage party Stockton has ever seen. Jared Barkley, you know I don't graduate for two years. And that seems like an eternity to you, I know. But believe me, it isn't. Now, Laura, I'm afraid you're just going to have to excuse me. Honestly, Jared, you're just as old-fashioned as father was. It's no wonder he chose you to be my guardian. I am supposed to be at the train station, young lady, to meet the 209 from Sacramento, and I'm late already, so I'm afraid we're going to have to continue this some other time. Well, there's nothing to continue, Jared. I've made up my mind I'm going to Europe, and you can't stop me. And what is it you plan to use for money? <laughs> You're not serious. Your mother's jewelry? My jewelry. You're not going to sell that. Oh, yes, I am. Mother left it to me. It's not part of Father's estate, so you have nothing to say about it. Now, wait a minute, Laura. Laura, you come back here. Laura. Laura. Listen, you just calm down and come back to the office. Let me go. Now, now, look, I'll tell you what. You come to dinner tonight, I'll arrange time for a little talk. I'm All right? not coming to dinner tonight. Tonight I'm going to be on a train to New York to catch a ship for Europe. Yeah. Now let me go! Sorry, Highness. I mean, I owe Welcome, Your Highness. This is indeed a great honor for my... our humble establishment. I miss Mrs. Owen. Jared! Jared, we missed you at the station. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, Reverend. Uh, a little matter came up. Well, no matter. Here you are. Uh, may I present Your Highness, Jared Barkley. Mr. Barkley? Your Highness? My aide, Captain Crawford. How do you do, sir? Captain? Now, the Barclays are hosting a fundraising party at their home on Saturday evening. That's very kind of you, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, we certainly feel that that's the least we could do. To my people, it is everything, Mr. Barclay. After three years of drought, millions of them are starving. His Highness would be most pleased if you could join us for tea, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, uh, I would like that very much, Your Highness, but uh, unfortunately, I have an urgent errand to run. So, uh, uh, until this evening? This evening? I've taken the liberty of arranging for you to have dinner at the Barclays. That is, if you have no other plans. Oh, no, we don't. We'll be honored. Until then, Mr. Barclay. Good. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me. Right this way, Your Highness.
luck? Well, it looks like you got trouble, Jane. <sighs> She's not on that train, I know that. I went through every car. Well, she didn't get on the stage either. What about her friends? Did you check them? Yep. Every one of them said if she's made up her mind to go to Europe, she's going to make it to Europe. Oh, you wait till I get my hands on that little... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I wonder if she could have ridden out to Fry's Junction to catch that train there. I don't know, but I'll check it out for you.